actually the timing of this podcast right before we started i got the blast in my email that just went up in those 75 bits just in the last 20 minutes so we'll talk about that a little bit but what's the problem with saying you know you start off saying rod the market's mixed and i hear that sometimes but then you explain what that meant but most of the time i ask the question how's the market people say it's hot it's cold it's good it's bad what's the problem with that well i think even an uninformed person can use adjectives I always like to use <laughs> statistics and let the numbers speak for themselves and let people draw their own conclusion about what those numbers mean. You know, an 8% drop in the number of properties sold. Some people may think, oh, that's really terrible. Some people may think it's not that bad. If you talk about the dollar volume being on a pace to be up 29%, some people might think that's fantastic. Other people might say, well, yeah, it's up 29%, but you're still 65% below where you were at the peak year, so it's not so great. So I like to just let people know what the statistics are, let them draw their own conclusions. And by understanding the numbers and the stats, it shows that you know what's going on in your market. There you go. So I was listening to a podcast, the Walker Webcast, fantastic podcast. And um, a professor from your old college, Wharton, Professor Peter Lemon was on the Walker Webcast. And Mr. Lemon last week just said, look, when it comes to inflation, his words were the worst time to buy a building it's the day you buy the building. And after that, inflation, appreciation, everything's going to catch up and things are going to work out. So, so yeah, things are tough right now. And I'll see financing is harder and probably more equity going into deals. But Bob, what are you seeing in the market, especially in the New York market? Interest rates are rising, loan values are certainly decreasing. What are you seeing right now and how are you reacting and advising for folks to adjust to the market? Rod, I think it's very interesting about interest rates. 100% of the time when interest rates go down, it's good for real estate. Not 100% of the time when they go up, is it bad for real estate? Depends why they're going up and what magnitude they go up. And then you layer on inflation. Historically, inflationary periods have demonstrated that inflation will exert more upward pressure on revenue than on expenses. So net-net, it's a positive thing. So there are lots of yings and yangs going on in the market today. I think that we are going to see a significant increase in trading, mainly because folks are not going to be able to refinance for the same amount of financing they currently have on their buildings. And so they'll be faced with the decision, number one, if they have the equity to effectuate the refinancing, do they have that equity? That's number one. Number two, if they have the equity, are they going to choose to put it into that asset or not? A number of the buildings still will have an equity cushion, so they can't potentially sell. But I think that the inability to refinance for the same amount of proceeds is going to cause a lot of trading. So while the market will take some time to get adjusted to the new normal with respect to interest rates, and you know everyone is freaking out that interest rates are going up so much, but you know I think historically the 10-year has averaged over 5%. So we are still at a relatively low interest rate environment as we were completely spoiled from 2008 to a year ago or so when, you know, rates were historically so low for so long, but it's actually not such a bad thing long-term that rates get to a more reasonable level, gives the Fed more ammunition to stimulate the economy when that becomes necessary. So a lot of different people are looking at the market in a different way. There are some things that it's going to cause disruptions with this increase in rates. It may cause some selling from folks who either don't have the equity to refinance or choose not to put that equity into the building. But as an intermediary, we like to see trading activity happen. And we've had a muted trading market, basically, in New York anyway, since the fourth quarter of 2015. The volume of sales has fallen fairly steadily since then. So we look forward to more activity, more volume, and some folks may not be discretionary sellers. They may have to sell for various reasons. Now, Bob, put this in context for our listeners. Some of you will live in the business for less than 10 years. So in your almost four decade career now, what was the highest interest rates ever were on the lending side? Well, I can tell you that my career started in 84, which wasn't the worst of times. 1981, <laughs> I think, 80 or 81, the interest rates were the worst. But if I look back on my multifamily cap rate chart, I see that the cap rates in 1984 were about 12 and a half percent. And so a lot of the young folks in the office will say to me, wow, people must have been making so much money back then. And I say, well, not really, because they were borrowing at 13 percent. Those are the borrowing rates back at that time. So everything has to be put in perspective. 